DJ Academics looks like he's going down a very interesting path. I'm not going to say bad. I'm not going to say um, destructive. I'm not going to say self sabotaging whatever, because those are easy things to throw out there. I'm always interested in just viewing stuff from afar, especially because sometimes, you know, there is no such thing as self-sabotage. Sometimes you just do dumb shit because you want to do dumb shit. And then you just have to kind of, you know, pick up the pieces when it happens or maybe not. So DJ Academics is doing this thing now where he started this um i guess the idea behind it is to have his own kind of network under the dj academics umbrella so he'll have different shows different podcasts and whatnot hosted there and one of the first podcasts that he has featured on there guess who's with you guessed it selena powell selena powell is one of the first people to have a guest show on there alongside her co-host i'm not sure what the person's name is but the show's called toxic twins and it's episode one and it's titled How I Survived Prison and Why I Exposed Little Meech. The same show premise that essentially got No Jumper kind of blacklisted within kind of hip hop black culture over there in the West Coast. I think so. That's my theory anyway, because as it goes, if you remember your law about Selena Powell, she was closely associated with No Jumper. She was hanging with them a lot. She would jump in on shows here and there. And then eventually they ended up giving Selena Powell and I think I forgot the other girl's name, but they ended up giving the other girl and Selena Powell a show. And then I think in the process of maybe just in a stretch of four shows, it got cancelled within four shows. And in that process of four, I think they outed like 17 people or some shit, right? Like everyone from like Snoop Dogg to like random basketball players. And obviously being West Coast and stuff, a lot of those people were very upset, very mad. I think they might have even exposed something about Odell Beckham or something about him getting shitted on or something. I don't know, something mad. But essentially, stuff that if you're a you know an owner of a hip hop or black media kind of platform, you're gonna have to mind your p's and q's because if you upset the wrong people, that's you could put. Especially if you want to navigate and have you know in the industry, you want to have interviews with people, which is what No Jumper's kind of built on, having interviews with artists and guests and stuff and whatever it may be. So as soon as that happened, everyone kind of I felt like distanced themselves from No Jumper. It was only until, ironically enough, when Adam kind of brought on AD, T-Rail and all those guys that suddenly then all the kind of LA hip hop type people who are based over there were more welcoming to come on the show or to come on the platform. Guys like Wiz Khalifa, even Mozzie, um, those people I don't think wouldn't have ever come on No Jumper if it wasn't for like AD and T-Rail and that whole crew of guys. So having Selena Powell on your platform is legitimately, as the title of the show goes, very toxic and could essentially, you know, ruin relationships that you don't even know you had the potential of having or whatever it may be. But, you know, academics is going to do what academics is going to do. So let's watch the first couple of minutes of this show and see what the vibe is saying. But big up Selena Powell and this show already. How I Survived Prison and how Why I Exposed Little Meech, pilot episode. Seven, ready? Six. Yeah. Oh, yeah, point that, point that, point that, 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 that. The word. Back to your mouth. Oh, you know that, baby. Four, three, <laughs> Yuck. Two. Babies, welcome to the Toxic Twins podcast. <laughs> Bitch. Bitch. We have a fucking podcast. I know, and I'm so excited for this. This is our first fucking episode. I'm so excited. Are you? Yes. Let's talk about where the fuck have you been? Because you started off with your own podcast, and Ugh. you just disappeared. I only disappeared because I went to fucking jail. Then I went to prison. And then I was in that fu fucking halfway house. Yeah, how the fuck was that? Like, it's crazy. You go, like Honestly, prison wasn't that bad. Um, I had two girlfriends. I was getting fucked. I had the time of my life there. You were getting fucked. Yeah, I was getting fucked. How? <laughs> um, dude, but they made a strap on with, like, socks and, like, what's that thing that they wrap it from, like, the kitchen? Um... Clingville. Tram wrap. Yeah, they, they made a fucking dildo with it. And I was sneaking you to her. You fucked with socks and, yo, what's wrong <laughs> with you? You already know, baby. I'm not doing no fucking two years without getting sex. Are you dumb? Like, I, I went in there. I was like, it's either I'm going to fuck the guards or I'm going to fuck the inmates. And the inmates came first. So I was like, what's good? <laughs> yo, I really thought I was going to have a cell phone and everything in, in prison. I thought I was going to be on live every day. Still running my own account. Is that whose name? Didn't um, you got tattooed on your hand? Yeah, Joyce. <laughs> you so the fact that you remember that? I yeah. just remember you calling me and telling me, like, 
I have a girlfriend. I'm like, what do you mean you have a girlfriend? I had two. I had two. I had And she was like, yeah, she's in here for, like, murder. I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> like, you just don't learn. You go from, like... <laughs> yeah, I, I like... um. You know, I'm not going to get into that, what I like, but uh, I definitely <laughs> I definitely like the violence. So that's two minutes in. That's two minutes in to this podcast. Two minutes. Two minutes in. <laughs> An absolute mess. But the beauty about podcasting and the beauty about content creation out there, there's something for everybody. So in the same way, you know, if you're out there and you want to see, you know, channels about gangsters and how they've rehabilitated their lives... If you want to see channels about, you know, sex workers, you can see that. If you want to see ch channels about kids that flip in, buy vinyl and listen to albums in full and sit down there and dissect the albums and whatnot, you can watch that. People that live stream games and stuff. There's always something out there for somebody, right? So this is definitely going to find this audience already. We're looking at what, how much the views are? 20,000 views and it's only three hours, which is pretty decent. The like ratio thing isn't the greatest, right? 1,300 um, down votes to 626 up votes. So clearly people don't like the sound of what they're hearing, but the views and stuff will definitely propel it. The reason, the thing that I'm thinking about is why do we think academics is doing this? Why is DJ Economics doing this? Because on paper, because he talks about it a lot, it's the one thing he kind of always puts his hat on. Um, you know, I'm rich, I've got money, I'm rich, I've got money, I'm rich, I've got money, which he clearly has, and he's very successful. If he is as rich as he says he is, and I think he is, personally, I don't think he's lying, you know, he's got a lot of revenue streams, you know, it, just the fact that he runs a very popular Instagram page, just from what I know from working in, you know, startups and stuff, you can easily pay people to post on one square of their Instagram feed anywhere from like, you know, five pounds to fucking 50,000. So, I'm sure he's making a decent amount of money off of his Instagram alone. Then you add in all the streaming. Then you add in the Twitch. No, the Twitch, obviously not. The AdSense. You add in the sponsors. He's got a podcast with Spotify. He's got an actual contract with them, I'm assuming. So that's even upfront money or it's money, you know, broken down and you get it as a salary or it's given to you quarterly. He just signed a deal with Rumble. So there's loads of revenue streams for academics. If that's the case... The easy thing to say, oh, he's doing it for the money, it doesn't make sense because he's got many revenue streams already. So why would he be doing this? Unless this is part of the deal of like Rumble. Maybe this is what he was doing. Maybe this is the whole game. When he signed with Rumble, part of the, part of why he wanted to kind of do go on there is because he wanted a platform that he could be kind of unfiltered with the kind of view that he was going to bring on a Selena Powell type person on the show who's a little bit nuts and all over the place and going to expose people. Maybe that's the thing. I'm not really too sure, but I think if you're academics, personally for me, he seems like somebody that's desperate for the acceptance or the acknowledgement from the hip-hop industry. As much as she kind of rags on them, um, the kind of, you know, the what, what would you call them? The media elites or the gatekeepers or whatever else, or whatever else their term they're called. There's still, I feel like, part of him that wants to be accepted, especially amongst the artists. You see how he acts now, you know, with flipping, you know, NBA Youngboy and stuff and how his tone has somewhat changed about, you know, how he's basically addressing NBA Youngboy via some other people. So there's clearly a certain type of artist, maybe a certain age, a certain caliber of people that he wants to be associated with. And when it comes to the media guys, there's definitely a group of guys and girls that he would like to be pally with or be in the same room with and be cool with. If that's the case, you just can't be having someone like Selena Power around. Maybe you keep them in the background, you know, like other people are, because clearly a lot of people in the industry fuck with her because a lot of people in the industry have fucked her. But you can't be, you know, collaborating with her in this type of way because it's going to end up doing some irreversible damage to your other relationships. Some relationships that you don't know you had the possibility of having. So it can't be money. It's got to be clout. And if it is clout, it's a dangerous game because most likely than not, just the association with this woman will end up getting the guy in trouble. And we've seen what guys do with women. We've seen how crazy and unhinged they get. You know, people have, many people, many, many a people have died off of the back of uh, arguing about girls. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. Selena Powell seems like the kind of person who enjoys the chaos, enjoys the drama. Maybe I could enjoy it too, but this will probably end up in tears. But that's not such a bad thing. That's what I'm saying. It's all entertainment. But I'm just thinking if I was Ak 
and I had all of his revenue streams and, re and income streams, I wouldn't be doing this. There's no need to do this, really. It's unnecessary. But then again, it shows the ceiling that most content creators has. And maybe this is a really strange thing to say, but it's also highlights why so many of these content creators are jumping into boxing now. There's nothing else to do, really, after you reach a certain point. If you're, yeah, if you're in it for the clout, you're in it for that. Because some people, I'd imagine, after a certain point, you know, once you're making like, there's a bad thing to, weird thing to say, but I'd imagine, personally, I haven't done it yet, but I'd imagine, once you're earning 10 grand, there's no real difference between earning 10 grand a month and earning 100 grand a month. You're basically doing the same type of thing. I'd imagine. Maybe some people go crazy, but I'd imagine your lifestyle is probably about the same when it comes to 10 and 10 and 100,000. If that's the case, why not start boxing? Because at least that lets you do something different. It's a whole different side of content. It might open up different avenues of income streams, different avenues in terms of a career. That could be a thing as well going forward, 100%. But I don't know. It could be that. Or it just could be just boredom. Or it just could be clout. And I'm kind of, um, what do you call it? I'm thinking about it too deep. It could just be the clout drug. Maybe there isn't, something maybe even money isn't enough for some people maybe the fact that you're financially secure and you have the respect of some people in your industry isn't enough maybe the actual need for clout is actually way more appealing and addictive than money is or even you know fucking chicks if you're that kind of guy maybe that's the thing clout is the one because once you get the clout you get the clout it's forever. It's everlasting. It's kind of stamped yourself up for it. Who knows? But um, yeah, mad, mad occasion. Surprised to see this turn from him. Um, it's probably going to end in tears. But hey, I'm here for the lows. I'm here for the lows. That's what I'm here for. Nothing else and nothing else beside that. Moving on from that also, another bit of flipping academics news. He's, you know, like an idiot, decided to get himself involved in the little Dirk and NBA young boy beef. It's way too complicated and too layered to get in detail with and describe, but there's many YouTube videos out there kind of rounding up the beef. So if you want to check it out, please do. Just YouTube search little Dirk, NBA young boy beef, and you'll find loads of cool documentaries that kind of break it down. But essentially, it's a real one. Many a people on either side of the camps have died, um, most notably, of course, King Vaughan. And it's definitely a beef that's going to be, it feels like long lasting at this point with these kind of guys. One blood, once blood is spilt, there is no kind of putting that genie back in the bottle, no way, shape or form. There is no resolution, no nothing. They're going to be warring until, you know, either party passes away or until they're old. It just is what it is. And for some reason, academics wanted to get himself involved in this and insert himself in the situation by kind of antagonizing things. He appeared on some random stream and basically said, yeah, the beef between NBA Youngboy and Lil Durk is kind of off, is cancelled. Um, they've made up or something. And he obviously said it in a sarcastic kind of academics way, but still, it's just a necessary thing to say, especially considering how real this beef is. It's not some like hip hop beef like on the wax beef sort of thing this is actually real stuff happening in the streets people are actually losing their lives people's lives are in danger it's not the most um it's not the most uh you know harmless thing out there it definitely will cause people grievous bodily harm he did so and then nba young boy went on a bit of a rant online you know getting at him and basically saying hey we're not cool anymore because for a period of time academics was very cool with um NBA young boy they used to speak quite a lot in the background in the scene I think that there's the legend is he'd recorded a two hour no I think a six hour podcast or something with NBA young boy who said to never release it until he dies or something or whatever you know NBA young boy is notoriously very very media shy very very anti-media anti-industry so for him to have a relationship with act is a big thing for some reason academics took that for granted or he basically assumed because they speak on the phone about industry stuff or about music that they're somehow friends he took, got too comfortable, said what he said. Um, NBA Young boy went off. And I guess Ak was trying to like, you know, play it off like it wasn't a big deal. And at the same time he was streaming, NBA Young boy went live and said the following. This video is fucking hilarious because he's trying to act cool about it, but you can tell, you can tell Ak is nervous. In my opinion, anyway, you can tell he's a bit nervous about this. Let's play the video. Bitch, I know I ain't fine. Ain't worry about no numbers, nigga. Bitch ass nigga, let play lip bang, take lip bang. Your stupid drunk face says. Mm. This is all you like to do, bitch, is get drunk and talk shit. <laughs> that was gonna get you fucked up, nigga. 
<laughs> Yo, I swear young boy's trolling me. <laughs> uh, he's not trolling you, brother. He said quite clearly, if you keep on fucking around and running your mouth, I can even understand the accent, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Your mouth is going to end up getting you in trouble. And that's legitimately the truth. <laughs> Yo, chat, I swear young boy's trolling me. I swear he's not. You, you know why he's trolling me? Because young boy's been on the phone and be like, man, I just like to watch you. I just like to watch you when you popping your shit. Like, he how can you not understand somebody can like you one day, especially a goon? How can you not understand goons are temperamental and one day they can wake up and think, fuck you and fuck everything you stand for? He literally said that. <laughs> anyway, let's not play that. But yeah, you get the gist, right? Um, the issue that I've always kind of had with Akko and this sort of thing, I don't mind the guy. I think he's really entertaining and shit and he's clearly carved a kind of path for him that many other people have followed behind him and essentially, you know, single-handedly changed hip-hop media forever for the good and for the bad, but generally I think for the good. The thing that's always annoyed me about him has been him mostly as a person. I'm not really too bothered about his opinions on music because, you know, you look at the guy, he's not exactly somebody that you'd go to for good musical taste. You know, I wouldn't think so. Even though his name is DJ Academics, he doesn't really strike me as somebody who has a great taste in music. But you go to him for the news, the fuck shit, and whatever it may be. But I don't understand why, as a person, he's kind of like weird to kind of get your head around, especially when you think about the whole notion of, oh, I'm not, a, I'm not from the streets, I'm just a journalist. Cool then why do you keep like barking at these rappers when they get in the beef with you like you're going to do something? Whether it's Lil Baby or Freddie Gibbs and stuff, he'll start shouting and screaming and talking real tough on the microphone. And the thing that's really annoying about it is that he knows that he doesn't go outside like that. He knows that he stays his ass indoors and doesn't really go to the places where all these guys are at to be, you know, ever have, you know, to ever be in some kind of level of danger. He knows that. So for the comfortability of his own home, he could just keep barking, which I don't like. I think if you're going to stand up to these rappers and be like, hey, because I think he's got a point. Some of these rappers do take the piss, especially when it comes to media. They feel like everything rolls around them. It kind of does, but they kind of, you know, they take it a little bit too literally. And they need to kind of uh, allow him to do his job um, and report the stuff he reports without getting butt hurt. That should be the name of the game. Or without having to put like hands on him and shit or whatever. That's not necessary. But he also has to understand that you just can't be talking to anybody every, any way you want just because you have money and because you're kind of hidden away in your home. That makes you look like a lame. So if you're going to do the whole, like, let me shout at you from the comfort of my, behind my computer, do that, own it. But then you can't have both things. You can't be the, I'm going to shout back and stand up for myself and not be bullied. But then I'm also not going to go outside. Like That's just really strange. To face your bully, you have to kind of face them. You can't just be shouting at them from behind the screen. And um, I think ever since that whole Blueface thing went down, when he essentially turned down the fade from Blueface and was kind of copping, please, but then he went to fight little baby and then this and then not really. And then the Rory and Morse, I think this guy's like all of those beefs. He probably has all the reason to be for them, especially the Rory and Morse. If the story about Rory going to his house and putting a letter box, the letter for his post box is true. He's got every reason to be, you know, fuck Rory to life. But at a certain point, you just have to chill and stop and just kind of, you know, you got the W, you won, well done. You ended his engagement, you embarrassed him, you're done, you dance on his grave and shit, you enjoy your friends, cool. You just keep going and going, knowing full well you're not going to come outside. It's just a bit lame. And then on top of that, the other thing, the hard on thoughts thing. How can you be hard on thoughts when essentially you wife them? No, again, no shame. Everyone's got their flipping taste. Everyone's got their things that they're into. But how can you be hard on thoughts when you wife them? It's just weird. Especially the fact that he's wifing the ones who are like savages. He's wifing the ones who are like, they know how to run guys' pockets. These guys are, these girls are pros. You know what I mean, they've seen, they've chewed, they've chewed up and spat out many uh, mighty amended academics. And he feels that like he can kind of wrangle them and sort of like tame them some way. So it's never going to happen. So that's the only thing that's kind of a little bit confusing and annoying about the guy. But overall, I'm eager to see it play out in real time. Personally, eager to see it play out in real time because from my point of view, or from where I sit, he seems to be in a fairly comfortable position, but he seems to be purposely throwing himself into the volcano for no reason. You're making a lot of money streaming. 
you've got a deal with Rumble, you've got a podcast deal with Spotify, you've got one of the biggest hip-hop platforms on social media. Why are you associating with Selena Power? And why are you inserting yourself into real rap and street beef between NBA Youngboy and Little Dirk? Why are you doing that? Just report the news, save something hot or nah, whatever, you know, put post music videos, do the thing that you always used to do. All this other shit is not the lick. But maybe it is, especially from an entertainment point of view. Maybe we just sit here and watch it and I stop complaining about things because you know what? Entertainment is entertainment, blood clot.